LD is helping me clear the space and he's gonna help me smooth out the floor and make it flat. And uh, first we're gonna get the old generator out and upon inspection the ground is not flat. So he's donated six of these nice big tiles. Tomorrow we're gonna cement six tiles down, make sure it's completely flat, then the booth can be brought in. It's really cool to see offerings. Bless this shed. We've ripped out a big exhaust fan here because when the generator needed to be run, we had a big exhaust fan here for the fumes to be ejected. Don't need that anymore. And it's kind of sad to close this up because it's a beautiful, look at that. God, that's beautiful. I gotta board it up because uh, we can't let any weather come in here on the vocal booth. So the booth will have a window. Uh, and hopefully I can record with the doors open so I will be able to still see out into the world. There it is. This is where we get all our electricity. Two little cables. It runs through the trees. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Have to chisel off all the old concrete along the sides so that we can put them up flush together. Moldy has generously donated these six tiles that we can lay down as the flat base for my recording booth. Cement soup. Mm -mm -mm. One down. All right, so slight setback in time warnings. Worth of cement had to be ripped up and started again. I think Moldy um, made the cement too thick and it dried very quickly. And we were having a very hard time leveling it out. Hi, Mom and Dad. And also when I was flattening it out with the, the back of a hammer, because that's all we had, I broke one of the tiles. Also, one of the tiles was too small. It was cut like unevenly or something. So getting two replacement tiles and a professional cement man. last. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Look at that. Is that what you wanted? It's exactly what I wanted, I think. So the booth is not that big, Just but it's case. the perfect size. Yeah, I think it's the wow. perfect size. Good morning. So I've woken up with an extremely, extremely sore throat. Runny nose. I feel like crap. And today is the day that I've put off the last three weeks of work that I promised I would start recording and getting everybody's voiceovers back to them. And I highly doubt that's going to happen. And if it is going to happen, it's going to take 10,000 takes to get it sounding good and a lot of editing. <laughs> so, rat test time. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, that's a solid line. Shit. Hey, honey. Did you give me COVID? Hmm? Hmm? Really, really terrible timing with work because I feel like I should do it now while it's not in my chest where it hasn't affected me too badly. But I have to borrow a car to do that because my studio is not built yet. I got clients waiting on voiceovers for over three weeks now. I always deliver within 48 hours tops. And now I'm about to tell them possibly that they're gonna have to wait probably another week. Uh, that's really bad for business. <laughs> Absolute cluster f right now. Okay, so I've set up the mobile recording studio in the car. It's all working very well. I'm sniffly, but I still think I can get it done. But hilariously, can you hear this? Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> this car inexplicably makes a tick tock noise. When it detects that the doors aren't locked, it lets you know with this tick tocking. It's not the hazards, it's not the indicator. It's a different tick tock and it just stopped, and it will come come on randomly, <laughs> which is, oh, it's just so great. I just wanted to show you <laughs> how this is all set up. There's not much to show, but a few people have asked me about it, so. <laughs> Excuse me, COVID. It's a suction cup mounted to the window. It's usually for cameras, I believe, but I've got the, the correct thread for a microphone to be threaded on there. Just got a shock mount in case there's any vibration through the window or in case there's any movement. Then I chuck this guy on. Uh, this is a Altec poor man's version of a Chaotica eyeball. Uh, I think Chaotica charged two to three 
500 US for theirs. This cost like 20 to 30 US dollars. It's basically just a molded foam cavity and the microphone goes through there and it's got a little fitted pop guard that goes on the front. And what this is good for, because this booth, <laughs> the car, sounds like a car. It's not perfect. It's pretty damn good. Cars are great for VO when you're traveling because they're airtight most of the time and that's how sound gets in, it's through the air. This guy gets popped on over the top like that. It traps some of the reverberation that's happening in the car. It stops anything from coming from behind. It does a really good job of deadening the room or truck cabin, so to speak. <laughs> it's not even a car, I'm in a truck. And that's going into a Roland interface, audio interface, which is completely bus powered by a teeny tiny little chewy laptop here. Uh, it's running Windows. I love this little thing. The screen detaches, it's touch screen. It's uh, very, very versatile. It's not very fast, but uh, for what I need, just recording into Ableton uh, voiceovers. Yeah, perfecto. And then, I talk to myself for the next hour, hour and a half. <laughs> I always start my day recording with the same client who sends me very, very simple phone prompt scripts every single day. They've been fantastic over the last, I think we've been working together four or five years now. Every day they send me a bunch. Today I've got like 45 prompts to go through. It's, it's a really, really solid source of income. So I always want to make sure I start with them so that they're never waiting. And also because it is really, really simple, it's a great way for me to warm up. There's really no way to screw up a phone prompt. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Please press 2. I can do it in my sleep. In fact, I have done so. So I can hear how snotty I am. I don't think the client will notice. And also, these guys send it off to many, many of their own clients. So they're not hearing the same voice over and over again. They might just think this is how I normally sound. <laughs> Look at my face. I'm very excited to get my booth finished because that's going to have silenced AC piped in, which I can keep running with. Very excited about because in a car, I've got a spectacular view. But uh, it's a car, and I am sweaty McSweatface. I've had the car doors closed for only 10 minutes, so that's why I'm having the vocal booth built. Hopefully, I won't be so moist. Various types of goods coming from target risk countries. Oh, my lung capacity has deteriorated with COVID, I believe. We're unable to take your call right now. And that's how it's done! Oh my god, I need... That's nice. Let's get some hearing. That's going straight for my head. Yeah, cannot wait for the booth. Hey, made it. <laughs> hey. Wow, that's well packed. Crazy to see it all coming into place. Yo. Get some AC ducting so I don't melt. It's an insane setup coming all the way here into an acrylic box sealed around a <laughs> AC unit. So it's pretty crazy, but it works really well and it's completely silent. <laughs> Bye guys. Good job. See you. <laughs> the booth is finished on the top of a mountain on a small island. Got it set up so I can just stand and record. Don't need a chair. There's the AC. Flows in there nice and quietly. <sighs> me. <laughs> that was months and months and months of planning. And this is it. We're done. We're good. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. That was shot in July 2022 when we just moved from Hong Kong, where they were still enforcing a very strict 
quarantine regime. This booth now gets hours of use every day, and thanks to Bali soundproofing, it cost me under 4,000 Aussie dollars, including the air conditioning, so that I no longer have to sweat my face off. Look, I'm so dry. And it was lucky we found those boys, because after researching the hell out of industry names like Whisper Room and Studio Bricks. I actually decided to buy a Studio Bricks One Plus, I think it's called, but I had a really bad customer service experience with the official distributor in Hong Kong. We'll leave it at that. Plus their booth, including shipping costs from Barcelona where they're made, was gonna be over 15,000 euro. And obviously labor is much cheaper here, but I gave the boys at Bali Soundproofing the specs for the Studio Bricks One Plus booth, and they absolutely nailed it. They usually specialize in soundproofing rehearsal rooms and karaoke rooms but it's just worth keeping in mind if you're thinking about building or buying a booth you might be able to find a group of contractors who can make it for you exactly to spec thanks again for watching subscribe hit that bell so you can see all the upcoming videos including one about the specific recording setup for this booth and many more videos about the voiceover industry and how I run my business catch you in the next one